Bet Online is the world's most trusted betting platform and your number one source for everything football. Bet Online has every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads to bet on during the games. Think you know your stuff? Get in on our $200,000 mega contest and pick five games against the spread every week for your chance at weekly prizes and a share of $200,000. When the game's over, head on over to our online casino and get in on a game of blackjack or poker or unwind with one of our over 150 slots games. Head to the website today to get in on the action. Bet online. The game starts here. Welcome to the Believe in OK State podcast, along with Nathan Gilslider. I'm Justin Southwell. The Cowboys shooting for their first conference win as we face the West Virginia Mountaineers Saturday. West Virginia comes to Stillwater with an overall record of 2-2, two and two, and they are 1-0 in conference after a 32-28 win over Kansas. Mountaineers are benefiting from a bye week and are looking for revenge against the Pokes, who beat them 48-34 in Morgantown last year. OSU has won eight of the past nine against the Mountaineers and has won three of the past four games in Stillwater. Mike Gundy is 9-3 and three in his career against the Mountaineers, while West Virginia's Neil Brown is 1-4 and four against OSU. Neil Brown has been with the Mountaineers since 2019, has a 33-31 and 31 record during his time there. Brown's coaching journey started back in 2003, and he got his first head coaching gig in 2015 at Troy. Overall, he's got a solid coaching record of 68-47, and 47, and has done great in bowl games, sitting at 5-1. and one. According to 24-7 Sports, composite recruiting rankings for the past four years include 2024, 46th overall, 2023, 49th overall, 2022, 35th overall, 2021, 41st overall, an average of 42.75. Dead even with Oklahoma State at 42.75. West Virginia is averaging 6.26 yards per play and 410 yards per game. They love explosive plays, so it's a rough matchup for Nardo's defense. So far, we have not been successful at limiting explosive plays. Senior quarterback number six, Garrett Green, yet another dual threat quarterback. This season, he has 902 passing yards, seven touchdowns, four interceptions, 209 rushing yards with two touchdowns. He is averaging 13.85 yards per completion, which is top 25 in the nation. A couple of things stood out to me when I was watching that Kansas game. When he runs, he does not go down easily. Our guys will need to be sure to wrap him up because he can bounce off of tacklers. The other thing is he's not afraid to throw it in the middle of the field. West Virginia has gotten a lot of chunk plays through the air on deep post routes, but if the middle of the field is taken away, he can still make throws to the outside as well. Nathan, what are the keys to our defense in stopping Garrett Green? Well, Coach Brown, you you kind of alluded to it, but even back whenever he wasn't at West Virginia, he is big on run, run, shot, play, run, 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 shot, play. Doesn't have to just be running back, you know, can quarterback running things of that nature, but that's, that's his typical rhythm. He is not much for dink and dunk. If he's going to throw the ball, it's going to be for big yards, but it's all predicated on the run. Unfortunately for OSU, that's not been our strength. Both a good running attack plus a good running quarterback have been hard for us to corral so far. In order to slow down this offensive attack, it is all going to come down to being able to keep Garrett Green in the pocket, keep our rush lane integrity, and stop the run. Because it is all about man coverage, play action, throw a deep bomb, run, run, run throw a deed bomb play action. You know what I mean? That That's just in a very basic rudimentary way. That's the way that Coach Brown has 
played ever since he's been at West Virginia. And even if you go back to his previous stops offensively, that's what he likes to do. It's very effective. He is good at what he does. West Virginia fans are equally as frustrated as Oklahoma State fans right now. So, you know, they're looking to get back on track, losing both of their rival games to Penn State as well as as uh, Pitt. Quite honestly, they should not have lost that Pitt game. They, they got worked over pretty good in that pin, by a good Penn State uh, team in that game, but uh, that West Virginia Pitt game was a gift. And so that really started, at least from my end of being able to hear it, there was already – there was a hot seat. He was kind of – I guess you'd call it the hot seat last year. He kind of saved his job most likely with a very solid year. They had a fantastic uh, offensive line last year and a really, really good young uh, running back. So – <clears throat> that being said, the key to uh, slowing down this attack is stopping the run and keeping the quarterback in the pocket. Garrett Green, to your point, has a ton of moxie. He's a fighter. He is that energy, that little lightning bolt. He's most likely not going to play on Sundays, but he is a great college quarterback. If you let him get loose, he can hurt you with his legs, but he also he he will run to throw. Right. If a pocket collapses, he doesn't just always just take off to get away. He takes off to buy some more time for his guys to get downfield. We saw that in last year's game. Um, they hurt us a couple times just on that alone. I expect to see more of the same if we're not able to keep our rush lane integrity. And what and by that I just mean we've seen it too many times this year where our guys will try to rush the passer, they'll go inside, they'll go, they'll run the loop, which means you go all the way around the backside and you leave this gaping hole for the quarterback to step up and then do whatever he wants. And we run way too much man coverage for us to keep doing that. You mentioned last year, Garrett Green had 249 yards against OSU last year. He was 15 of 30, 50% completion, two touchdowns, one interception. He also had 16 carries for 117 yards. That dual threat and keeping those, keeping the lane integrity is going to be a pretty big key. How about, Cover two, Tampa two, any kind of schemes that the defense can utilize to maybe take away some of those deep throws down the middle of the field? You know, sound, sounds great in theory. I just, we haven't seen that much from Coach Nardo. You know, that's not really what he brought over. If we do go zone, it seems he run, he likes to lot, run a lot of um, three high. We struggle in zone, quite honestly. We have since the first game. We don't look very comfortable in it, so I don't expect that that's something we're going to sit in a lot. We might throw it out there every now and then, but it's not something I'm I'm ex expecting us to see very much of on Saturday. It's, I mean, it would be a great one, but it it seems that we rely a lot more on man coverage. And, you know, with somebody like Nick Martin, not 100%, we don't know what we're going to get out of him. It really seems like this is going to come down to a Kendall Daniels Trey Rucker situation. I don't foresee Nick Martin getting that that task very much on Saturday. I don't think he really has, quite honestly, much of the season. You know, I don't we don't use him much in that way, but whatever we do with him, I think is going to be pretty limited. I, I know he's pretty banged up. So yeah, a lot of pressure on Trey Rucker. I mean, the guy's coming up, fitting the runs, he's dropping back in coverage. We're going to have to rely on him to have a, a big-time game for our defense to expect to have any kind of major success. And in order for him to have a big-time game, the D-line has to eat double teams, has to not let guys get to the second level, you know, those type of things. It's just like everybody always says in football, right? It's, it's every man has to do their job to have the success on the play. And for defenders, that second level, the defensive line, has to hold their ground and eat it up and allow our guys to run in there and make the play. You know, this is an interesting matchup and this is one of those one of those games after starting 0 and 2. This is it. I mean, there there was no margin for error after the Utah game and there's certainly none now. If you want to do anything outside of making it to the guaranteed rate bowl, it has to start now. And we're kind of expecting a close game. But what you don't want to see is Garrett Green with the ball in his hands in a two-minute type of situation, whether it be at the end of the half or the end of the game, because 
he is just he's come through clutch so many times in those situations. And if he comes down to that, I will be very nervous. So hopefully we're not put in that situation, but cardiac cowboys right on. Well, some of the wide receivers that we maybe need to keep an eye on. We have number three, Hudson Clement. He had seven receptions for 150 yards against Kansas. Number seven, Traylon Ray, two receptions for 70 yards against Kansas. And another six foot seven tight end. <laughs> and number 87, Cole Taylor. Seems like we just, we always get matched up against these dual threat quarterbacks, six foot seven tight ends all season. It's weird uh, that everybody has them besides us. Yeah. Uh, he so far has 11 catches for 133 yards and two touchdowns on the season. And of course, we can't forget former Oklahoma State receiver number five, Jaden Bray, who has two catches on the year, each of them for 44 yards. So he's got a total of 88 yards. No touchdowns yet, but hopefully we don't see any touchdowns against us. Yep. Uh, I think that's that's about it, right? For the wide receiving core, I don't foresee Jaden Bray. I, this is probably going to be you know, famous last words, but you know, he's kind of a, a hit or miss guy, just like he was at Oklahoma state. It's, you know, boom or bust a little bit inconsistent. I don't think the playing time has been quite there as, as, uh, as he thought it would be when he transferred, but you can't sleep on any of these guys. They can make plays. They're, they're not bad. They're pretty solid. And Garrett green can make all the throws. So there's not really like a route tree, issue here that like he can't make a deep corner or a, a cross country route from the opposite hash if you give him time he's got more than enough arm to get it to him so got to be on it let's look over at the defense some guys to keep on our radar senior defensive lineman number 11 tj jackson he is a transfer from troy and he has a knack for getting after the quarterback According to PFF, he has 20 QB pressures on 99 attempts, about 20%. He was named the Big 12 Newcomer of the Week two weeks ago. So our offensive line is expected to continue to do well with pass protection, but they may have their hands full in somebody like TJ Jackson. West Virginia currently ranks number 106th in total defense. They're giving up 6.19 yards per play on average and 410 yards per game. Their passing defense ranks 110th in the country, giving up 256.5 yards through the air per game. Rushing defense is 83rd with 153.8 yards per game. And opponents have averaged 28.5 points per game against them across four games. This might be the chance for the Cowboys to get things rolling again. Uh, you know, we've faced a couple of pretty tough defenses so far this season. Looks like we might have a little bit of some breathing room here. So looking back at some of our opponents for context, Arkansas ranks 21st in the country in rushing defense, giving up 3.14 yards per carry. Utah currently ranks 33rd in rushing defense, giving up 3.6 yards per carry. And Kansas State ranks 20th in the nation in rushing defense, giving up 3.04 yards per carry. So with West Virginia giving up an average of 4.02 yards per carry, will Ollie Gordon be able to take advantage of this defense? What do you think, Nate? I was actually going to be one of my bold predictions is that Ollie gets on track this week. And one of the reasons – is is not necessarily the rushing numbers that we're looking at, but from whenever the the games that I've watched with West Virginia, they have had a heck of a time on the back end. Like they have had some major breakdowns on uh, their pass coverage. That's what did them in against Pitt. You know, that's where the games that they've lost, and and even KU. I and mean, KU's been struggling, but when KU hit, you know, they hit big. And so with that they've not been able to bring the extra guys in the box that everyone else has been able to do. So it's either going to be the chicken or the egg here early on in this game. In my opinion, it's going to be 
Are they going to try to bring it down a little bit and risk it a little bit on the back end? Or, because that's been such an issue for them, are they going to have to play farther back and and not bring as many guys down and hope that their defensive line can hold up? I will say, for as much struggle as our offensive line has had this year, when we get even to even and maybe a half man, they've done very well in the run game. So I really do believe that this is going to be one of those games, again, like we talked about last week and like everybody that calls our games talks about, it's going to be on Alan Bowman. If Alan Bowman can prove to them early on that he can hit those deep shots or at least that he can make the right play on a guy quick and out and we can get some chunk yards, they will back up. They've had to back up in every game that I've watched. They've had to play softer zones, give more room. Everything that you actually kind of see Oklahoma State having to do when we struggle, it's there for us. It will be there on Saturday. If we take advantage, you know, just like Coach talked about, you know, there's some things obviously you don't necessarily agree with. Maybe some of the things that Coach says, maybe some of it's Coach speak, maybe some of it's just him seeing something completely differently. But one thing I do agree with is that there's plays there, and if they're made, they change everything. It's out there to be had. It's not just like we're, you know, don't have the guys. We're just, you know, not doing well enough or whatever it may be. There's plays to be had. And if they are made, they'll change everything. And they're going to be there again early. And you and I have talked about this extensively, especially early in games. When we take our early shots, Alan Bowman has not connected. You know, there's a couple various reasons. You want to say whatever wide receiver, but. They've given people have tested them early and say, prove us to back us up. And we've not been able to do it early in games. I fully expect West Virginia to do the same thing. Even though they struggled, they're going to make us prove it. And it's there. I really believe, even though I think that uh, West Virginia fans still see Ollie running in the fourth quarter from last year's game, that he has an opportunity to really bust open this week. And hopefully the floodwaters will open. And if he isn't able to get things going, I know we can trust in Brennan Presley. He has multiple catches in 35 straight games, which is the second longest active streak in the FBS. One thing that Dunn has done a good job of is making sure Brennan Presley is touching the ball. If he's not going to be able to connect on those deep passes, at least get the ball to Brennan out in space. And I, and I, yeah. And do his I, work. You know, after what we saw from Stribling last week, what he's starting to put together on a consistent basis, his opportunity is going to be there. I think this is a Shetron game. I think this is a game where you can get Shetron going down the sideline and give him a chance to go get one. You know, even in the Kansas State game, I don't, I didn't have too many issues with the interception that Bowman threw trying to take that shot to Shetron. That was a 50 50 ball. It really wasn't that bad of a spot. The defender, to be honest, from my perspective, uh, Shetron allowed that defender to really run the route for him. You know, he got boxed out early, didn't fight to come back over the top. Then he tried to just reach over the top and stop him. That guy it was a beautiful job by the defender. And so I didn't have too many issues with Bowman giving that giving Shetron a chance to go catch that ball. As a wide receiver, that's all you can ask for. And so I expect many more of those in this game. And our guys are going to come down with our fair share. Maybe now's the game for us to get back on track doing that. Maybe yeah. they'll be inspired by Alabama's receiver, Ryan Williams. who just goes up, spins uh, around, races into the end zone. I mean, whatever, whatever you need, whatever you need. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care, but we need it. As a fan base, we need it Saturday, please. Please. No, but so honestly, true. that's, I mean, it is true. And the guys feel that, right? And you're going to feel it. You're going to feel the angst in the crowd if we don't get off to a fast start the way that the last two weeks have gone. So Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it is very important that guys get off to a fast start. They execute properly. We get things rolling and allow Boone Pickens to actually help us out. Um, I felt in that Utah game, they gave us zero chance to impact that game until late. And then, majority of the crowd was gone because we were getting mm-hmm. absolutely shellacked. So it is it is important at home to get going and get the get the vibe going into the into the bye week right. 
we can hopefully get this season back on track. That Utah game, I don't blame the fans for leaving early. It was a hot one. Looks like this Saturday is going to be a hot one as well. Looks like 94 degrees on Saturday afternoon, so that turf is going to be cooking again. Might as well dive into the uniform predictions. Brought to you by OK State Tracker on Twitter and X. Follow at OK State Tracker for documentation of the Oklahoma State uniform combos. So black is probably out of the question. Crazy to think about, but we might only see the black jerseys one time at home this year because Crazy. homecoming is always orange. And then we have one more remaining home game against Texas Tech. But I am going to guess orange, orange, white for this one. And for the logo, I kind of went back and forth. What do you go with? A white brand or the white Curse of Cowboys? I think I'm going to go with the white brand. So it'll be an exact repeat combo of what we saw against Kansas last year, which is maybe a little little bit of a disappointment because we've seen a few repeats already, but it's a solid look and I wouldn't be too mad to see it again against West Virginia. I am going to go with white, orange, orange and black cursive cowboys and black face mask. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Yep. It's time. All the elements. That's right. Orange, white, black, get it all in there. That's it. It's time. Bet online has the spread at Oklahoma State minus three and a half. The over under at 65 points. For me, I'm thinking, man, this game, we are truly backs against the wall. Can't afford to lose another game. And you especially cannot lose that game at home at Boone Pickens Stadium. I say Oklahoma State wins this one by finding a rhythm on offense. I'm going to go with 42 to 28. Ollie Gordon had 282 yards and four touchdowns against West Virginia last season. Wouldn't we all love to see that again? Thought we were going to after that first quarter last week. <laughs> um, we got hints of it, so yeah, there's a I chance. Know. I know. That's kind of what is. Yeah. Anyways, I am going to go with a 38-34 to 34 Cowboy victory. I really do believe that this is – this is the game Ollie Gordon gets going, so I'm I'm looking for about 125, 150, two touchdowns out of Ollie. I, I think sounds that's, like a great first half, Nate. Not, well, we, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. That's true. Uh, I know he's no Ashton Gianti from Boise this year, but it's in there, right? We've seen it. He knows it's in there. Just got to give the man a, a crease. We saw it in Kansas State. It's still in there. It's not, you know, that talent didn't go anywhere. You know, that energy, that burst, you just can't allow him to get hit at or behind the line of scrimmage. I mean, there's very few running backs in this game ever that have success. They're able to have consistent success when that happens. And one of them was in Stillwater, but he's one of very few. So he's got to be able to get his rhythm early. And I think that's one thing that's been lacking from his vision is just a rhythm and a timing, right? There's so much rhythm and timing to offensive uh, line play, blocking it up, and when you can hit, when you can cut, how you can set guys up. So if we can get him going again early like we did against Kansas State and continue to press the envelope and don't just sit back and throw it 50 times again because that's just never going to be the recipe as long as Alan Bowman is our quarterback and the way that this current team is is made up, that's just never going to be the way that we can consistently win football games. And it's going to have to be a little bit more ball control than what we've had. Our defense has struggled, yes. Our offense has continued to put them in very difficult situations time and time again. Three and out, Absolutely. three and out, turnover, three and out, turnover, right? And for a defense that already is struggling with some depth, and we knew that was going to be somewhat of an issue going into the year. The, we are not playing complimentary football, and we don't have the talent, quite frankly, on this team to not play that way. You know, there's a couple – I remember whenever um, Knowles first got here, you know, we really started to slow down the pace and really, you know, my goodness, he was even more conservative than typical. He was punting from opponent's side of the field, all the things that we had to do. I'm not calling for that, but what I am calling for is – be more complimentary. If fast pace, if we can't consistently hit first downs, then don't go fast. 
because it doesn't help anybody out, especially on a hot day, especially on hot days. So I think we got to do a better job as a coaching staff, playing more complimentary, allowing our guys to get the breaks, our offense to maybe get more in a rhythm and then go fast. If you get a rhythm going, then speed it up. Don't speed it up to get into the rhythm because that hasn't worked yet this season outside of the first couple drives on scripted place. So let's stop hurting ourselves. And I'd love to see some, uh, I'd love to see maybe some zero, some five out, some, you know, all they start in the backfield and then spread out some different looks because this you know, double running back tight end, two tight end, fullback, whatever, however you guys want to match it up. It's not been working. It's not been good enough. And the guys have not consistently been winning enough in order to, make it worth bringing the crowd into the box. So let's keep it as spread as much as we can. Let Ollie win and Alan Bowman be complimentary off of that rather than trying to set the run up with the pass. Let's run and then allow let Alan take his shots. Get that rhythm, get that confidence. If, if, Alan, the if, if, if Alan's going to be the quarterback, he's going to start the game, but I will be interested to see if we don't get off to the fast start, what happens. Game six versus the West Virginia Mountaineers will be Saturday, October 5th at 3 p.m. Central Time in Boone Pickens Stadium. It is family weekend, so we are told to wear orange as fans. Monster BMX jumpers at the block party. Pistol Pete's partners get a group rate. Who knows what any of that means? You got to be there to find out. All right. And if you're unable to see them in person, the game will be televised on ESPN2. Nate, anything else before we wrap this one up? Need it. Need it in the worst way. Need it going into the bye week. I would love nothing more than for Bowman to get back on track and then put some of this to rest. But one way or another, we need to find out who the signal caller is going to be moving forward and if this team has enough juice left to get the engine back started after the bye week. So this is incredibly important for the rest of the season, for these guys, for everything they came back for. This is it. Got to turn it around here. There's no more. This is extremely important for this season. I don't like must wins, but this is a we very much need win. I would agree with that. <laughs> well, this episode of the Believe in OK State podcast is presented by Bet Online. Please like, share, and subscribe to show your support. We'll see you next time. And remember, all things are possible for the one who believes. Yeah.